Hello friends, today in this video I am going to discuss about the dot blotting. Dot blotting technique is used for the identification of presence or absence of biomolecules like DNA, RNA or protein in a tissue or cell or in a sample. Okay, and this dot blotting technique is simplified form of southern blot, northern blot or western blot and its simplicity is its advantage okay and it is called the simple process because here no electrophoresis is required that means no separation of biomolecules according to their size is required okay so here note so as we omit the electrophoresis step so we don't require to transfer the biomolecules from the electrophoretic gel to the membrane okay so we have to add the biomolecules directly on the membrane Okay, that is the direct blotting on membrane. It is done like this. Suppose this is the membrane. Okay, and different biomolecular samples, for example, protein samples are added to the membrane like dot, as a dot. Okay, so suppose these are the different protein samples added on the membrane as a dot. Okay, and the remaining steps are same as the western dot for protein identification. Now, now when we add the antibodies against the target protein on the membrane, then and this, this antibody is attached with the enzyme. So, when next when we add the substrate on the membrane, then this those enzyme which is attached to the antibody convert this substrate to a colored product and suppose here your target protein is present okay now this colored product is produced by the enzyme when the antibody antigen interaction is occurred okay so we get and we, we can visualize this and can interpret the presence of protein target protein in this sample okay so this is the main principle of dot blotting okay and uh, another advantage of dot blot is the sample of different source can be tested in a single run that means the different samples different samples come from different source can be tested in a single procedure of DNA of dot blotting okay so this is the advantage and what is the disadvantage of dot blotting the main disadvantage is that we that we do not get any information about the size or molecular weight of the biomolecules like protein that means as we omit the electrophoresis step so the proteins the micro uh, the biomolecules or proteins cannot do not separate it by their size or molecular so we do not get any information about the size of the biomolecules and that is the disadvantage of dot blotting okay now the procedure of nucleic acid identification by dot blotting okay now at first we have to extract dna or rna from the tissue or cells okay and remember that dna or rna identification process is almost similar and that's why I don't explain it individually. Okay, so at first we have to isolate DNA or extract DNA, RNA from the from different tissue or cells, and then we have to add the DNA or RNA to the nitrocellulose membrane as a dot, like this. Okay, and each dot represents different sample of DNA or RNA. Each dot represents different sample. Okay, and now then as the dna is double stranded so we have to denature them so that the double stranded dna can come into the single stranded form and this denaturation is done by alkali treatment mild alkali treatment by NOH okay and then we have to immobilize this dna or rna single stranded dna or rna to the nitrocellulose membrane by incubating them 82 in 82 70 degrees celsius okay and then hybridization is done by adding radioactive probe this radioactive probe can specifically bind to the 
DNA RNA sequence specifically bind to the DNA RNA sequence okay and then we have to wash the unbound radioactive probe okay and then we have to auto radiography we have to do auto radiography by placing a extra plate on the nitrocellulose membrane and this and those radioactive isotope give a spot on the x-ray plate like this and we can interpret that the presence of specific DNA sequence in, the, in this two uh, dots okay so this is the identification process of DNA or RNA by dot blotting okay now the protein identification by dot blotting at first we have to add different protein samples on the nitrocellulose membrane as a dot okay so each dot represent each different protein sample okay and then we have to block the remaining portion of the nitrocellulose membrane so that the antibody cannot non specifically bind with the nitrocellulose membrane okay so now the, in the next step at first we have to add primary antibody to the nitrocellulose membrane and primary antibody can specifically bind with the target protein in any one in any sample okay so in the next step in the next step we have to remove the unbound primary antibody from the nitrocellulose membrane so we have to wash the nitrocellulose membrane with pvs buffer that is the phosphate pvs buffer that is a phosphate buffer saline okay so now the secondary antibody is added to the nitrocellulose membrane which specifically bind to the primary antibody okay and this secondary antibody is att attached with the enzyme and in the next step when we add some substrate of this of those enzyme then those enzyme convert this substrate to a colored product like this okay and then we can visualize this colored product and we can interpret that these two sample contain our target protein okay and in this way we can identify the presence of a protein by dot blotting okay now what are the applications of dot blotting dot blotting can be used for the identification of transgenic individuals suppose you want to introduce a gene to different type of cells suppose there are three types of cells are present and you introduce a gene to three types of cells and now you want to detect which type of protein which type of cell take your gene and integrate it to their own dna so then you isolate the dna and perform a dot blot so you can interpret which cell take your gene okay that is the transgenic individual okay and dot blot is also performed to estimate the protein concentration okay so here a dot blot is present here the these are the dots containing the known concentration okay and the color intensity say color intensity say the concentration of protein okay so here the highest concentration is present because this the color intensity of this dot is highest and here the lowest concentration of protein is present so comparing this known concentration with the unknown sample you can say the concentration of unknown sample for example the intensity of this sample match with the intensity color intensity of this sample okay so you can say that the, the concentration of this sample the concentration of protein in this sample is same to this sample so in this way you can identify the protein concentration by dot blotting okay so these are the applications of dot blotting okay now thank you for watching this video